Hi there, Ricky Dunn speaking. A number of you have been asking about this acronym, My Basket. So here is my response to that request. When I think of the Bible, I think of it as history, or we can say His story, God's story about His relationship with all the human race. And then under that, I have my basket. The M stands for mankind. That's found in Genesis 1 through 11. You don't have nation states at that time. You don't have large countries. You read about individuals, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, later Seth, and then in the line of Seth, you have Enoch, you have, uh, and Enoch walked with God, you have a man like Methuselah, and after Methuselah dies, you have a man who found grace in the eyes of the Lord by the name of Noah. So it's a time of individuals rather than groups of people. After that period of mankind, we have the B for beginnings. Starting with Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through Malachi, it's all about Israel and how the other nations of the world relate to Israel. So the B stands for beginnings of Israel. And during this period, we have the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You also have included Joseph, who is sold into slavery in Egypt. And then he becomes number two in the kingdom there in Egypt and brings his family down. And then, of course, Israel begins to grow. The people begin to grow, and then they are enslaved by the Pharaoh. God raises up Moses. Moses goes down, and he delivers the people out of Egypt. They are in the wilderness for about 40 years, wandering because of the rebellion against God. And then Moses dies. That is the end of the beginnings period. Next comes the S, the settlement period. God raises up another man by the name of Joshua. So Joshua takes the people into the land and takes them about seven years to conquer the land. And here you have Joshua, Judges, and Ruth involved in that period of time. After the settlement, the people begin to ask for a king. So we have the K, the kingdom period. It's a united kingdom and then a divided kingdom. United under King Saul, David, and Solomon. And then the kingdom split. Israel takes uh, ten tribes in the north. Judah has two tribes in the south. So you have this kingdom period uh, for several hundred years. And following the kingdom period, because of the rebellion and the idolatry of Israel, God raises up the Assyrians in 722 B.C. They come down, remove that northern kingdom, and repopulate that northern kingdom with Gentiles. So that Galilee, which was once Jewish territory, becomes known as Galilee of the Gentiles. You find that in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, and also Matthew chapter 4. So you have this time where the uh, northern kingdom is removed and repopulated with Gentiles. 722 B.C. and 586 B.C., God raises up the Babylonians to come down and destroy Jerusalem, destroy the temple, and removes the people of Jerusalem out of that area and takes them to Babylon for a period of 70 years, according to the prophecy of Jeremiah the prophet. And so that gives us the exile period. That's what the E stands for, exile. And then after that 70 year period comes the triumphal return, where God raises up a man by the name of Cyrus, the king of Persia. And King Cyrus allows the Jews to go back to the land and build their temple. And so it begins with Zerubbabel. He takes about 50,000 Jews back to the land and they rebuild the temple. About 85 years later, he raises up Ezra, the priest, and he takes a group back 
and restores worship. And about 13 years later, he raises up a man by the name of Nehemiah. He takes some people back and they rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So there you have it. You have the beginnings, or you have mankind, Genesis 1 to 11. And then from Genesis 12, 1 through Malachi, it's primarily about Israel. The beginnings of Israel. And then you have the settlement of Israel and the kingdom of Israel and the exile of Israel and the triumphal return of Israel. So there you have it, my basket. I hope this has been helpful to you and has been an encouragement. Thanks for watching.